the Empire 150 trial was looking at atezolizumab plus bevacizumab plus chemo versus bevacizumab plus chemo. Um, one of the distinct um, entry criteria for this trial, which was unique from other upfront trials, which typically excluded EGFR and ALK patients, was that um, they did allow patients who were EGFR mutant uh, to go on after progression on TKI, and it showed a survival benefit um, even in those patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer. So um, we'll start with Leora. EGFR mutant lung cancer progresses on TKIs. You've gone through all your trials, and you're going to do chemotherapy. What's your regimen? Do you use Empire 150? I don't, you know, a lot of the times I find that for some reason or another, I actually need to keep the patient on the TKI for the EGFR patients. Maybe they have brain meds and I actually want to continue their osimertinib and just add chemotherapy. Um, I also find that I cycle back and forth. So maybe they'll be on chemo for a while, but then I want to go back to the TKI. And there's data out of um, Memorial, there's data out of uh, uh, Mass General showing that if you do that, that those patients might have increased toxicities to their TKI after they've received a checkpoint inhibitor. So I am still using more carboplatinum pemetrexid with or without bevacizumab, depending on whether or not I'm continuing the TKI in those patients. I have yet to give the Empower 150 regimen to any of my patients. Okay, Josh. So, I mean, I also have not used it. And the reason that I'm not using it is that if you look at the hazard ratios for this, the, the hazard ratio favors, when they look at EGFR and ALK together, um, hazard ratio favors the quadruplet, but the confidence interval crosses one. Then in the further salami science here, when we slice it up further, we say, okay, well, how about only EGFR? Well, that confidence interval doesn't cross one. So that's a survival benefit. But then if you cut it one step further and EGFR, patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer who have actually received a TKI, meaning appropriate with the eligibility criteria, now the confidence interval crosses one again. So what I say to patients is, it is the only study with any data in this setting. It's not great data showing a clear and substantial benefit for these patients. So if I'm going to give chemoimmunotherapy to these patients, which I tend not to do, um, based on the toxicity profile, I tend to use the Keynote 189 regimen, acknowledging that there's absolutely no data at this time to support that practice. Okay, uh, Jacob. Well, I think one of the challenges in this too is that these aren't necessarily all EGFR sensitizing mutations. When we're talking about EGFR mutations, we're thinking of the more, the more classic LA58R and such. But I think um, this EGFR mutation group within Empower 150 was actually a broader group, and, and um, didn't. It, this isn't necessarily all EGFR TKI eligible patients, and it would be nice to see a more broken apart data set on that. Uh, if someone had um, a, 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 an exon 20, or now we have clinical trials, but if you're not doing clinical trial, that's different than someone who's in a late 5.8 R. And, and, um, but but the, the bottom line is, I don't tend to use Empower 150 uh, a, a, a really much at all. Uh, I don't see any reason to use that over Keynote 189 to Josh's point. And so if I'm doing chemo immunotherapy, I would be doing more of that. Although, to Leora's point, I tend to be more hesitant about doing the checkpoint inhibitor. I'm more inclined to give just chemo, actually, after progression on a checkpoint inhibitor. I mean, after progression on targeted therapy, I'm more inclined to just do the chemo alone as second-line therapy. Or chemo plus BEV. I'm not really a big BEV proponent, actually. I, I don't know that... Uh, uh, now, I mean, BEV is, is entering the landscape once again now. And, and I know we'll get to this in the EGFR discussion, um, but I, 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 I don't know that the data necessarily is, is a big supporter of that. Although I'll say, I mean, I think bevacizumab in some ways, it's, it's like a religion where everyone's looking at the same data and the BEV believers go, see, there's a benefit. And the people who aren't big into BEV go, see, there's not much benefit. So it, it kind of ends up being on the in-between uh, but I tend to not really be much of a user of BEV. I have to say, I'm more likely to give BEV with a TKI than I am. Uh, sorry, with chemotherapy, I've never given BEV with a TKI. 